Hi right, folks, Nathan Adlin here with my buddy. Andre Smirnoff. You may have noticed we are dressed rather spiffy and it's for a special occasion. We are bringing you three mid-size luxury crossovers. Andre, tell them about them. That's right, we have the champion, the sales leader, the 2016 Lexus RX. The more affordable of the three is the Volvo XC60. And on the higher end for pricing is the 2016 Lincoln MKX. We are going to give you as much data as we can possibly squeeze out of these vehicles and you will have the opportunity to decide which is best. Coming up right now. This four-cylinder engine puts out 302 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque, combined MPG 22. That's not bad. And it's hooked up to an eight-speed automatic transmission feeding all four wheels. This engine has a supercharger and a turbocharger. There's virtually no lag. There's a lot of power. Up at high elevation, it just goes. That's partially due to the fact that the supercharger kicks in and then the turbocharger kicks in. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Really likes to get up and run. Six point eight four. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's fantastic. These vehicles in this class really do personify luxury and safety. I mean, you gotta admit, they all have top marks, right? Absolutely, safety is very important in this segment. So how do we measure safety TFL style? You know, one way to do it is to take them on the track and perform a braking test, a 60 to zero, and see which one stops the best. That's a really good idea. I'm in the 2016 Lexus RX the sales leader in the luxury crossover, and I'm doing a 60 to zero braking test. I'm gonna do it the same way in each car, get up to 60 miles an hour, and then slam on the brakes as hard as I can, and we're gonna see the stopping distance compared to each vehicle. All right, I'm gonna get up to 60. Make sure I'm going 60 at the cones, and slam on the brakes. Whew. I felt anti-lock brakes kick in and um, I think I did pretty well, but I need to do the Volvo and the Lincoln now to find out the difference. Now I'm behind the wheel of the 2016 Volvo XC60 T6. I'm going to perform the same braking test, get up to 60 miles an hour and then slam in the brakes and see how she does, if it can actually beat the Lexus. Wow, I went about half car length further than the Lexus. Um, interesting. So Lexus did better. I wonder how the Lincoln is gonna do. I'm gonna try the same test. I'm gonna see if it can beat the Volvo and the Lexus. So let me see, 60, break! Ah, whoa. Wow, once again, like half car length further than the Volvo and almost a full length further than the Lexus. So that's pretty amazing. Um, the Lexus has the shortest stopping distance of these three. Wow, the Lexus has pretty good brakes. This is a unique power plant because it's turbocharged 2.7 liter and it's a V6. This engine makes 335 horsepower and 380 pound-feet of torque, which is a lot. It's hooked up to a six-speed automatic transmission, feeding all four wheels. Now, despite the fact it's basically the same size as the other ones, it gets a combined 19 MPG, which isn't quite as good as the other ones. All right, 2,500 RPM. Whoa. 
in these EcoBoosts. This is the 2.7 liter. 7.64. So we are rolling in a 2016 Lexus RX 350. With the F Sport package. That's very important. And we're gonna show you the sound level. And we have a new uh, sound measuring device that shows us the maximum. And we need to be going the speed limit. Cruise control? Cruise control? Yep. Let's measure the sound. 67.5. Now we're in the 2016 Volvo XC60, 68.4. So just a little bit louder than the Lexus. So once again, we're going 35 miles an hour. All three vehicles, we've had the sunshade closed. Yep. And the fan, the air conditioning system is mid-level. Dude, 65.3. That was quieter. Oh yeah, by far. That was quieter. I could, I could tell driving. Could you? Yeah. Okay. This is the quietest car. Behold, 295 horsepower, 267 pound-feet of torque. The largest displacement engine amongst the three of these, it's a 3.5 liter V6. And it's the only one that is naturally aspirated. Now, this V6 is hooked up to an eight-speed automatic transmission, which does feed all four wheels. And it's combined MPG 22, not too bad. Up here at high elevation, it is at a little bit of a disadvantage. Okay, here we go, three, two, one. Go. Definitely sounds the best out of the three of them. Nine point one five. Passengers in the Lincoln get the largest and the most relaxing cabin of these three. The front seats feel more like a comfortable chair in your living room. The 39.6 inches of rear legroom is the biggest among these three. Despite having transmission control buttons, which are not easy to get used to, the MKX interior is a luxurious and quiet place to spend some time. The dash and the center mounted tachometer in the RX350 are sporty. The seats offer aggressive bolstering, but they're still plenty comfortable. Fit and finish are top notch. The 38 inches of rear legroom is more than the Volvo, but less than the Lincoln. The Volvo's interior design is starting to show its age. The infotainment screen is relatively small, and there is a multitude of tiny buttons on the center stack. The cabin is both elegant and comfortable. Volvo's back seat offers 36.4 inches of legroom, which is the smallest in this comparison. Still, the XC60 offers generous cargo space and utility with 67.4 cubic feet with the rear seats folded down. Now, where do these luxury crossovers fall? It's interesting, on paper, they're all very different. The Lincoln has the most interior volume. It has the most cargo volume. It is also one of the more luxurious in terms of interiors. Mm -hmm. We do know for a fact that the Lexus stops on a dime and it performs very well and it is a proven value. And we also know that this XC60 built by Volvo is a rocket and it's also the least expensive amongst the three. Absolutely, it's the most affordable and surprised me a lot at the track. What are we doing here with these economy cars? Guys, there's another mashup that's coming right around the corner and we have the Ford Focus and the Nissan Sentra. They're gonna go head to head and that's coming really soon. That's right. But we need to rate the three luxury crossovers for fuel economy, right? That's right, so tell us which one won. You know, Volvo edges out Lexus by one MPG on the highway at 27, 
So Volvo is the winner in the MPG department. Okay, and then it's Lexus? Lexus and then Lincoln. Wait, that ties us, right? We're tied that, across the board. That's right, we're tied after all this testing. Okay, very good. So, we have to choose one. We have to choose a winner. Okay, so which one of the three Volvo. would you... Absolutely, I'm gonna choose the Volvo. I love that car. It is sporty, it's really quick. It gets the best mileage. It has a lot of utility, including those little seats that pop up for kids. Mm -hmm. It's cool looking, I think. It's my choice, absolutely. You know, I agree with a lot of what you're saying, but I would choose the Lexus RX. Why? Because I think it nails the luxury crossover in the midsize segment. It's comfortable, it's got more room on the interior, and I like the edge of design. And the F-Sport package mm -hmm. is actually quite a bit of fun. Really? Okay, well, there you have it, folks. He chose the Lexus, I chose the Volvo. Thank you guys so much for joining us for the Fastlane Car. This is Nathan Adlin. And Andre Smirnoff. Don't forget to go to tflcar.com for news, views, real-world reviews, and... Mega mashups. See ya. My name is Luke Walsh. I am the owner of Greenhead Motors. Me and my wife started this about uh, four and a half years ago. And Luke, uh, let's start and talk about Greenhead Motors. What's okay. the concept? I see a lot of electric cars around us and hybrids. And yep. plug-in hybrids. Plug-in hybrids, everything. We, uh, we specialize in efficient used cars. Uh, it's kind of what our motto is, is the greenest cars are, are used green cars. So we uh, take advantage of the Colorado tax credit on used uh, EVs. And so we ship them in from other states, cars that you can't even get in Colorado. Like the Fiat 500? Like the Fiat 500. And uh, there's a 1% for every kilowatt hour battery pack uh, off the purchase price. Uh, sent back to you from Colorado with a cap of $6,000. Now in a new car, the federal government gives you seven and a half thousand, Correct. but that's yep. only on new cars. That's only on new. So those are all taken on all of our used cars, but the, uh, you still get a pretty generous rebate on the, uh, on the used.